I would like to welcome everybody to the Medicare Get to Know Medicare presentation hosted by Seaside Wealth Management. Uh, I'm Brad Leinberger, and with me is Matt Callahan from Seaside, and um, would like to introduce our panelists, um, Virginia Cangelosi and Diane Gasworth, uh, both Medicare experts in their own right. They've they've got decades of experience between them, and so we brought them along to uh, just ask some of the complex questions that Matt and I get asked on really almost a daily basis. Um, and I think many of you can relate to the fact that Medicare can be a really complex thing. And so we wanna unpack it today. We wanna help you to uh, make it more uh, understandable and more simplified and really help to optimize uh, the best Medicare coverage for you. Um, as you know, uh, education and teaching and coaching are things that are really, really important to us here at Seaside. So we love doing events like this. Um, we, we have a series of events from Medicare to social security to long-term care insurance, those sorts of things where we just wanna educate, coach and teach. And so Matt and I welcome your feedback. If there's, if there's other subjects you want us to teach on, please let us know. Our mission is to help you create peace around the issue of money and what we found is that doing events like this um, helps to do just that. So with that, um, as I mentioned, Matt and I get asked questions every day, every week. We love it, it's fun. So we started to assemble some of the basic questions that we get asked. We're gonna use that to, to, to kick off where we're gonna give you kind of the basic foundational um, need to know information on Medicare. And then for some of the more complex questions, we're gonna turn it over to Diane and Virginia, and we're going to ask them. Um, these are some of the things that that we get asked um, you know, from you guys, which we love. And and just so everyone knows, uh, I put these simple questions together, and I'm putting uh, Brad on the spot uh, <laughs> just to see see what he comes up with. So with with that being said, uh, the first the first question is Brad, what what is Medicare? Yeah. So basically, Medicare is a federal insurance program that's going to help cover your medical expense uh, in retirement. Um, it's for U.S. citizens. It's paid for everybody who's working. You're having money withheld in taxes to pay for Medicare. Um, so basically, it's it's health insurance for you once you reach the age of 65, with a couple of exceptions. A uh, couple things that Medicare is not. It's not free. It's not a family health plan. Um, it's not Social Security, and it's not Medicaid. So, well, you're off to a great start. So, who can get Medicare? So, anybody who's a U.S. citizen uh, who can get it. Um, who you? But you got to be at least you have to be 65 or older. And the only exception is if you're under 65, you need to have a qualifying disability. Or you could be any age if you've got uh, end stage uh, renal cancer or uh, Lou Gehrig's disease, ALS. And so, do I need Medicare if I plan to work past age 65? So, this is a good question, and this one can get a little complicated. So, for most folks, if you're done working by 65, you really do want to go sign up for Medicare. You, you've got a, just a, a small window uh, around your 65th birthday of when you can do this. You don't want to delay because there's typically penalties. But for those situations where you are working past your 65th birthday, there are a couple of situations where you do not need to sign up for Medicare right there at age 65. One of them is if you're working um, and your employer has at least 20 or more employees, and you're covered uh, on your on your employer's plan, that's one of the times where you do not need to sign up. Now you're gonna get your Medicare Part A, uh, you're gonna get your Medicare card coming to you and Part A is free. You'll get that when you turn 65. Um, but signing up for Part B, uh, one of the exceptions could be if your employer-sponsored plan has at least 20 people on it. Um, if you do have health insurance through your employer, but there's less than 20 people on the plan, you will need to sign up. Uh, and then the other question that always comes up is, what if I'm covered by my spouse's employer? So you are, if you're covered by your spouse's employer and you're over the age of 65, even if you're not working, whether you are or doesn't matter, um, you can, that's one of those exceptions where you don't have to apply. 
But just make sure if you delay in that situation, as soon as your spouse uh, retires, then you have a finite window. And typically it's eight months where you, you could be over the age of 65, your spouse retires, you do need to sign up to avoid that penalty. Um, okay. I do want to point out that if you are over the age of 65 and you're on your employer plan, that's the situation. If you do have a health savings account, an HSA, which Matt and I love HSAs, they're triple tax advantage. They're one of the best type of uh, medical uh, savings accounts that are out there. Um, but over the age of 65, unfortunately, uh, you can no longer do the HSA. Um, and then the other thing to consider is Medicare is only going to cover you. Your dependents will not be covered by Medicare. Uh, so for dependents, you're going to want to think through what you want to do with them. Okay. Well, then what does Medicare cover? Okay. So original Medicare has two parts. You've got part A, which is considered your hospital insurance, and then part B, which is your medical insurance. So that's going to go, that's going to pay for doctor visits and things like that. Part A is free, part B you pay for. So in part A, it's going to cover things like hospital room and meals if you need to go, um, care in special units, sometimes prescription drugs uh, during an inpatient hospital stay, lab tests, x-rays, that sort of thing, um, skilled nursing services. Um, but don't get don't make a mistake about this one. Um, Medicare is not great for long-term care and should not be viewed as a replacement for long-term care insurance. Uh, there's, it's, it's very minimal in terms of what it covers um, in that space. Um, so here's a couple of, of quick facts about Medicare Part A. It's free if you or your spouse worked and paid taxes for at least 10 years. You cannot be denied coverage. Uh, it's nationwide, uh, and it, it'll cover you for any qualified hospital in the U.S. Um, so just a couple of things I, I think you'd find interesting. Um, the Medicare Part B, on the other hand, this is going to cover the doctor visits, um, this is it's going to give you an annual wellness visit. Uh, you get lab services, x-rays, MRAs, MRIs and CT scans, et cetera. There is a cost for Part B, and that's going to vary from year to year. So there's a monthly premium. Now, if you're taking Social Security, your Medicare premium is withheld or deducted from your Social Security benefit check. If you're not taking Social Security, then it's an out-of-pocket cost. Uh, you also can't be denied coverage on Medicare Part B. And like A, coverage is nationwide. So let's talk about things that the original Medicare Part A and B do not cover. And they certainly are not going to cover all of your out-of-pocket costs. Uh, they just don't. They don't all they also don't cover all of the prescription drugs. They don't cover dental, vision, or hearing either, um, or a vision. So those are some things. And then this is the long-term care piece I mentioned. Um, Medicare Part A and B don't cover the long-term care. That's where long-term care insurance comes in. Um, and then in many cases, care, any care that's received outside of the US uh, is not covered. So for those of you that love to travel, and I know many of you on this webinar do, that's something to consider as you're starting to make your healthcare decisions. Okay, so with that being said, where can I get more coverage? Yes, and that's really why, uh, so you, you have options. And we've brought Diane and Virginia on uh, because they've spent their careers helping people to figure this out. And, and what I really appreciate about both of Diane and Virginia is they, like Matt and I, they just wanna teach and coach and they, they're not incentivized to recommend one plan over the other, but this is, we're, we're gonna turn this over to them in a minute and they're gonna give you their insight on how to do this. And it's the, the answer, it, what's best for you is really a personal thing, but we're gonna give you some high level stuff and then let you ask your questions. Um, so one way to get some of your prescription drugs covered is Medicare Part D as in Delta. And by the way, Medicare is just an alphabet suit. There's A, B, C, you know, there's all these parts to Medicare. It's complicated. It's complex. That's why we're doing events like this today to try to simplify it and break it down. So Medicare Part D as in Delta 
that's going to be for prescription drugs. Um, and then there's also, you'll have an option to do a Medicare Advantage plan, which is called Part C. And there's 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 two different ways to approach this, and we're going to start to explain what, what I mean by this. You've got a Medicare Advantage approach, or you've got a Medigap uh, approach or a, a Medicare supplement. We're going to start to talk about the two. And I know our, our, our panelists have some different thoughts and, and opinions on that, so we'll, we'll let them share in a minute. Um, but let's take a look at Medicare Advantage plans first. So this is considered Medicare Part C, Medicare Advantage. And this is um, basically it's an alternative to original Medicare. You're, you're still in the Medicare plan, but it's, it's an alternative to it. And your benefits are administered by the plan. So these plans are offered by private insurance companies, and they often will have built-in prescription drug coverage to them. Okay. So that's typical of a Medicare Advantage plan. Um, you get all the benefits of Part A, so the hospital, and all the benefits of Part B, plus the prescription drugs. And in some cases, the Medicare Advantage plans may cover dental, cleaning, x-rays, that sort of thing, um, eye exams, glasses, hearing tests, hearing aids, um, fitness programs. I've got some clients that get silver sneakers. They get free gym memberships, uh, which is nice. <laughs> Um, so that all comes with your Medicare Advantage plan. Um, and the Medicare Advantage plans can often function as an HMO or a PPO. There's a lot of variety to the way that they work. Oops. Um, so there's some nice benefits to it. So a couple of fast facts on Part C there. Uh, you do need to be enrolled in Medicare Part A and B, and you have to live in a plan service area. So as we start to compare and contrast Medicare Advantage plans to Medigap plans, that's that's one of the things to be aware of is it could potentially be a limiting factor on the Advantage plans as you've got to live in the service area. Um, the upside is you can't be denied coverage based on uh, current health status or pre-existing conditions, um, and but you may be required to use the provider networks. Some people like that, Others don't. So that's what I want you to be aware of on, on these Advantage plans. Um, okay. So with that, let's now talk about Part D just a touch. Uh, Part D is going to cover the prescription drugs. It's a standalone plan, so it's not part of Medicare Advantage. Uh, it's something in addition that you would uh, pay for out of pocket. And it's going to cover most of your prescription drugs. And, and what you'll find is if you're willing to go with the generic version of your prescription drug, then it's going to be less expensive. And sometimes Medicare Part D won't cover uh, the, the, the normal coverage or the normal uh, med. And I'll, I'll let Diane and Virginia kind of dive into some of those details because this is also something to be aware of as you start to shop around for Medicare Part D. Just like the Medicare Part C with Part D, you do need to be enrolled in Part A and B. Um, you may be required to use their pharmacy network. And the costs, of course, are going to vary depending on uh, prescription drugs and where you live. OK, and so, Brad, can you touch a little bit on Med Medigap insurance? Yeah, so this is the alternative. If, if you didn't want to do Medicare Advantage, but wanted to do Medigap insurance. Um, so this is also gonna help pay for some of those out-of-pocket costs that are not covered by part A and B. And this would be an alternative to doing a Medicare Advantage plan. It works with Medicare part A and B and D, um, but you can't use it to pay for Medicare Advantage costs. So it's typically an either or situation. So there's 10 different plans that are considered Medigap plans, and, and you've heard them. There's plan A, plan B, plan, and I think uh, the latest, I think plan G from what I'm hearing, and I'll let Diane and Virginia confirm, but from what we hear from, from folks uh, is that the plan G is kind of the Cadillac of, of coverage, but I'll let our panelists explain more uh, about that. And, um, and so... Again, uh, Medigap policies are offered by private insurance companies, uh, state by state. Um, and so they're gonna help to pay for some of the Part A, the hospital co-insurance, 
Um, they can help pay a little bit of the skilled nursing facility co-insurance. Um, and there's also, they're going to give you an extra year in the hospital if you need. Um, so there's some, there's some really nice features about the Medigap policy, but do be aware, Medigap policies do not cover prescription drugs. They're not going to cover routine dental, vision, or hearing care. They're not going to cover eyeglasses or custodial care, and certainly not long-term care. So the way I've heard it described is Medigap might be a little bit more expensive out of pocket uh, at first, but depending on your situation and circumstance, it might actually save you money in the long run because of some of the other things that it will do for you. And I'll let Diane and Virginia um, explain that as we get there. So, well, so Brad, you threw a lot of options at us. How much does this all cost? Yeah, I know. Uh, so you've got different components of the cost. And we as financial planners are always making sure that we're baking in the most accurate costs into your financial plan. And in fact, um, statistics studies show that next to uh, income taxes, the next largest expense in retirement that you're going to face is your health care costs. Because you're going to have, uh, you're going to pay premiums um, for what you pay, you know, monthly premiums for the medical. You've got deductibles, you've got copay, you've got co-insurance. Um, so it can add up quickly. Um, so let's break that down a little bit. So your Medicare Part A is free. Your Medicare Part B comes right, it's right around $164.50 a month. And then you can pay any, I've seen, and I'll let Diane and Virginia speak to it, but I see it anywhere from 100 to 300 a month, depending on what Medicare Advantage or Medigap uh, plan you want. And then the Part B can be $40 um, uh, or more, depending on if you're subjected to IRMA. And you hear Matt and I talk about IRMA quite a bit, um, you know, I-R-M-A-A, -A, IRMA, just basically it's a, it's a surcharge that you pay for your Medicare costs depending on your income. So when Matt and I are doing planning techniques for you, such as Roth conversions or looking at income or doing multi-year tax projections, we wanna be really careful that we don't do anything that can throw your income into a place where you are subjected to IRMA. So, uh, because it makes it makes all these costs go up even more. So uh, talk to us about how to make the decision. Yeah. Well, so with when you turn 65, you're going to get the, the hospital insurance for free, so long as you've worked for 10 years. Um, and then it, it's, you, you do need to sign up as soon as you're done working or, or 65, whichever sooner, uh, you're going to sign up for your Part B. And then really the decision for most folks who do need uh, prescription drugs, that's where you can add a Part B plan to your A and B. Um, the only challenge if you go with part A and B and a, and a prescription drug plan part D, you're going to have a gap. You're going to have a hole in your coverage. And that um, the fancy term for what that hole is, it's a, a, a do the donut hole, essentially. The Medicare donut hole is, is what they call when you the costs that you incur exceed what part A and part B are going to pay for. That's when you start to come out of pocket. And that's why you want to consider either adding a Medigap plan or the Medicare Part C, the Medicare Advantage plan. And so continuing down the road here, you can you can take your A and B and add a Medigap. And most folks that we see will do the Medigap and a Part D. So it's going to give you prescription drugs through Part D, and it's going to give you that extra uh, coverage through Medigap. That's the pretty common one. The other option would be switching over to a Part C, and then couple links where you get your, your hospital and your doctor, and then you couple that with part D. And so in a moment, we're gonna ask Diane and Virginia what they see and what they recommend as they're working with clients on a daily basis with this. So I'm an, I'll provide this, there's a lot of details on this slide and I'll provide this to anybody that wants, but it just gives you kind of the breakdown about um, uh, Medigap versus Medicare Advantage. And we're going to talk about this next, but um, we've got all sorts of considerations here. So when can you enroll in Medicare? Okay. 
That's a key. So when this is your 65th birthday, there's really a seven month window. And what I mean by a seven month window is there's the month of your birthday when you turn 65. You can apply up to three months before, plus your birth month, and then up to three months after. So that's what I mean by seven months. And I'm I'm not kidding. Um, don't you don't want to mess with this uh, because the penalties for for delaying uh, beyond uh, after three months from your your birth month can be significant. And there and you there's no no do overs, no mulligans on this. Um, you once the you're paying the higher cost, you're stuck with that for life. So just be mindful of that and be, and you know, Matt and I are always anxious to make sure people sign up on time because we don't want to see you have that penalty uh, for the rest of your life. Um, there's a couple of other uh, enrollment periods. So the general enrollment period. So this is um, uh, if, if you are not, so if you miss it, then you're going to have an open window throughout the year. So uh, let's break this down for a second. So if you're 65 or older and you're enrolled in Medicare Part A and B, um, that's where you've got some time frames that you should be aware of. So for that situation where you're on your employer's, your spouse's employer's plan, and this is where you're over the age of 65 and your spouse stops working or retires, that's where you've got the eight month window to make sure that you get down and sign up. And so if you, if you miss that window, then again, um, the penalty applies to you and you really want to avoid that. Um, so you, here it is right here. That penalty can be 10% of the part A premium and that's for life. Same thing with part B, 10% penalty for life. Uh, and then Medicare Part D also has a penalty, 1% um, penalty for life. So when can you make uh, changes to your coverage? Okay. So there's an annual open enrollment period. And so for Medicare, it's October 15th through December 7th every year. So once you sign up for that first time, then every year, October 15th uh, to December 7th, um, you can revisit it. And then on Medicare Advantage, so I'm telling you, this is this is stuff's complex. They don't make this simple, and I wish they would. But for Medicare Advantage, it has a different enrollment plan, and that's January 1st through March 31st. So the first quarter is where if you're on a Medicare Advantage plan, that's the open enrollment period for you. And then, of course, um, there's a, a special enrollment period. So qualifying events. So let's say you move and you need to actually um, change up your coverage because now you're in a different network. Maybe you're in a different state or different part of the country. Um, and then if you leave, if you if you're uh, if you're needing to make a change or you're on COBRA or union coverage, that would be considered one of these um, special events. Um, so uh, you've got a, a limited time period to do it. So Brad, tell us where can we go for help? Okay. So a great resource is medicare.gov. There's a ton of good information there. We've also provided the Medicare phone number. Uh, pretty slick, 1-800-MEDICARE. <laughs> I love it. Um, so that's a good uh, place to go. But then that's a perfect segue to, um, to introduce uh, Virginia Cangelosi and Diane Gasworth. And we wanted to help uh, provide uh, some, some more help for you and places you can go. And um, so now we've, we've, we've put together some questions that, that we've been asked over the years that we thought would be really appropriate for Virginia and Diane to take care of. Um, and then Matt, if you guys have questions, those of you on the event, go ahead and send them in the chat. And then Matt, uh, perhaps you can collect those. And if you find something that's not covered um, by, our, by our panelists here, then, then we can maybe throw it to them. Sure. Okay. So, all right, the first, I guess the first one, um, Diane, I'm gonna start with you. Can you elaborate a little bit more on the types of services that are covered under Medicare Part B as in Bravo? Just talk to us a little bit about what does Part B cover? Absolutely. And thank you very much for, for having us, Brad and Mark, um, Matt, sorry. 
Um, so yeah, so Part B covers basically physician services. So think of anything that you know you have done by your primary care doctor or your specialist, any outpatient procedure as well, um, and other services like lab, x-ray, MRI, CT scans, um, wellness visits, uh, even ambulance and emergency services, uh, durable medical equipment, like wheelchairs, walkers, and canes, things that you need a prescription from your doctor for, would all fall under Part B. So very different than Part A, which is inpatient hospitalization and skilled nursing facility coverage. The other thing I would just mention is that you may have heard this term, but sometimes you can be in the hospital, but not technically admitted. So you're there for observation instead of, you know, as an inpatient. And so those types of observation services are sometimes also covered under Part B. So that would probably be a pretty good representation of Part B or professional type services. Okay. Okay. And then the thing that I want to really help people wrap their arms around, and this is this is kind of what Matt and I get in our meetings, kind of the rest of the tension point around this. And Virginia, this one's for you. Um, can you help to highlight the difference between Medigap or Medicare supplement um, versus Medicare Advantage? Just kind of highlight the pros and cons and, and maybe share your observations and thoughts about the differences in those two plans. Yeah. So Medicare supplements, also called Medigap policies, um, I, I compare the two of them. I think it's better to do one at a time. So for the Medigap policies, they generally have a higher monthly premium, uh, low to no out-of-pocket cost, no network restrictions. You can go to any doctor anywhere in all 50 states as long as they accept Medicare. All you have to do is ask, do you accept Medicare? Most all of them do. No referrals are ever needed, which uh, seems to be a problem for some people. So you, you don't have to get a referral and um, you know, if you if you have to ask for a referral, it can you can either be accepted or denied for that. The coverage travels with you. So I have uh, clients all over the United States in Medigap policies. They've taken their policy from California, and it works exactly the same way in all the other states. Also. I have clients that live in a couple of states. Half, some live half a year somewhere and half a year the other. They don't have to change their plan. Also, the supplements contain foreign travel coverage. So you have that benefit. Another area that is really helpful with the supplements is that if you have to go to a facility, say there's a stroke, or you have a broken hip, you pick the facility. You pick. You can pick one by your home, close by, convenient, but you just have to ask, do you accept Medicare? And then you can, if, it, if the facility does, then uh, you can select it. If it's a Medicare allowed charge, a supplement must pay. Um, the, the supplements now and include silver sneakers. You can get hearing loss included, hearing aids. You can get vision coverage. All these bells and whistles now are being put into the supplements at, in addition to the Advantage plans having these benefits. Now, something that's very interesting you know, some some people really like to shop their Medicare supplements, but just remember that Medicare designs the benefits of all the supplements. So if you have F, G, A, whatever you have, then those benefits are standardized. standardized. So if you get it from United or ARC, United through ARP, or you get it through 
health net, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, or whatever, like if it's a plan G, it's gonna have the same benefits. If it's a plan F, it's gonna have the same benefits. So the shopping part of it, and you can change your Medicare supplement. If, if you were, uh, were shopping between carriers, you're gonna look for uh, pricing and service. Those would be the issues. Now, if you want a Medigap, Medicare supplement policy, you need to make that decision. I tell everyone, if you want it, like you need to make that decision within the first six months that you are new to Part B, because at that time it's guaranteed issue. You don't have to answer any medical questions. After the six months goes by, then you're required to answer medical questions and you can either be accepted or denied, except occasionally some of these companies have what they call an underwriting holiday and they let people go in during that time frame without answering questions. So that's a pretty good summation of what you would get with a supplement, uh, same name, Medigap. So for Medicare Advantage plans, you're usually going to get a, a much lower monthly premium. Uh, you have to use the doctors and facilities that are in the network of the plan, whether it's an HMO or a PPO. So PPO, you would have some out of network um, benefit. Most plans require that you get referrals uh, the coverage does not travel with you. So if you're leaving the, the state, then you would get another plan where you're moving to. No foreign travel coverage. The plan controls the facilities that you can use. Prior authorization is required for some treatments, uh, services. They do, and this is a really good uh, point, they include dental, vision, drug coverage. Now, in some circumstances, you could even get groceries. Um, there's, there's a, you could get money back on your Part B. There's a number of things. It depends on certain parameters. So you'd have to check that out to see if you qualify for it. But with the Advantage plans, you they call it relinquishing your Medicare. So you actually relinquish your Medicare to an insurance company. And in return for that, you get a, an insurance policy. It's either uh, an Advantage HMO plan or an Advantage PPO plan. And the last thing, and that's very good, and Brad uh, uh, spoke to this, is you can get an Advantage plan once a year at this open enrollment or when you're eligible initially, and then you can change it once a year during this open enrollment period. Doesn't, doesn't have anything to do with any of your health history. That's, it's not the same as applying for a supplement. So okay. that's it, Brad. Okay, no, that's great. And 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 Diane, I think this would be I'd love to get your opinion. Do you have a preference on uh, a supplement versus Medicare Advantage? Uh, how do how do you view the decision? Yeah. Great great question. And I think I think it goes back to what you said earlier about preference. Um, and an individuals not just budget, but lifestyle and what they how they envision themselves using their plan. Um, so I think Virginia did an excellent job on, you know, MA versus Medicare supplement. I think a couple of things that stand out for me is with Medicare Advantage, it's kind of, um, it's sort of a pay as you go because many of the plans have a zero monthly premium. And so you're really paying nothing in addition to your Medicare Part B premium to have the plan in place. And 
So when you need to see the doctor, you pay a low copay and sometimes no copay at all, or the hospital. Um, those, those prices vary according to carrier and according to plan. But I think the most, probably the most appealing thing about Medicare Advantage plans is that there is um, an out-of-pocket maximum. There's a ceiling on what individuals will pay on those plans each year. There's a cap for medical expenses, and then there's also a cap for prescription drugs, drug expenses. So very predictable in terms of what your total outlay could be, given the worst case scenario. So I like that about Medicare Advantage plans because of the predictability and, and, and ability to budget. Um, but networks are a consideration. And Virginia touched on the different types of plans. There are Medicare Advantage HMO, point of service and PPO plans. And yes, there's a range of them and what each of them do. You know, many cover worldwide travel, so you're not restricted to that county that you enroll in. And then just like, you know, PPO plans, they allow you to travel and access out of network services from Medicare providers. So I look at the PPO as kind of an in-between Medicare Advantage HMO and Medicare supplement plans. They are network-based like HMOs, but it's open access. You can stay in the network and pay less, or you can opt to go out of the network. Some carriers have a national network, which is great for you know, clients who are traveling to see their grandchildren in other places in the US. Um, even going to those providers could be considered in network. So you pay the lower price, even though you're out of the area. So it all depends, again, on what individuals are looking for and how much of the ancillary type benefits that people are looking for. Those are the non-Medicare covered services that, um, that Virginia addressed. You know, the routine vision, dental, hearing, over-the-counter. So, so I'd say, um, you know, th those are considerations for Medicare Advantage and then Medicare supplements, yes. Um, very flexible, any, any Medicare doctor you want to see. And the only thing that changes if, if you move is the rate you pay. You don't actually have to switch carriers. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, and, and, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say one other thing. Um, the other thing is that on Medicare Advantage plans, you pay the same rate no matter what your age on Medicare supplement plans, um, typically you pay more the older you get. So your premiums go up with age. Okay. So Diane, I guess carrying on, what if there's a doctor that I just love or a, a, a couple of different doctors that I just love and I really want to, to, to see this doctor, how does that come into my decision-making process around a, a, a Medigap versus a, a you know supplement versus an Advantage plan? I think actually, Brad, that's the first place to start. Um, that's one of the things we we say to any individual who's considering a Medicare Advantage plan. It's, you know, who who are the doctors that you want to be able to continue to see, and any facilities you want to go to, and what prescription drugs do you take? Because those two pieces of information are key if you're deciding between a Medicare Advantage plan and a Medicare supplement plan, because only then can you know what you actually have in the Medicare Advantage plan, if it's going to allow you access to those doctors, and if your prescriptions are covered and at what cost, you know, at what tier, because it's a tiered system and the cost depends on, you know, what tier that drug is in. So that's, that's I think, really, really important to, to keep in mind. Um, and then I'd also like to say this is a very important consideration for people right now in San Diego County that are impacted by the decision, the recent decision by Scripps, both Scripps Clinic and Scripps Coastal Medical Groups. So I'm not sure if your clients are aware, but most probably are, especially if they use those doctors. Um, there are options for clients who want to stay with their doctors. Um, typically, it's Medicare Supplement or Medicare Advantage PPO plans. Um, you, you know, I just encourage you to look into it. You can keep those doctors. It's just going to cost a little more. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
Um, Virginia, can you do us a favor? Can you break down Medicare Part D and just give us your thoughts and feelings, uh, observations? What do we need to know about Medicare Part D? Just to review, because you've already explained it, but you, um, you purchase Part D if you per, you have, you're getting a medic, Medicare and a supplement, all right? And I've just helped numerous people with these prescription plans the last week since the open enrollment started. And uh, some of this has been said already, and but to find the most competitive plan, you know, all of our audience here, if you want to learn how to do it, and I strongly recommend, you know, an agent can can help you with it or one of your kids, or you can do it yourself. You just go to the medicare.gov website and all of us have gotten emails from Medicare. They, they remind you every year. And it, in any event, you go on this on the website and then it's very precise. You don't put a person's name in, so it's anonymous, but you put the name of the med medication, the dosage, the frequency of purchase, the name of the pharmacy, and the person's zip code. And then it, it'll come out with a really nice list based on your particular medications as to which ones are the most competitive. Like just earlier today, one of my clients, he had one last year and he likes this prescription plan. I said, but if you move over to this other one for next year, you're gonna save $10,000 because he's got MS and he's got these really costly medications. So all of you out there listening to this, once a year, you should do the analysis or have your agent do the analysis on your prescriptions because it changes. Like every year at this open enrollment, like the plans that are offered, the rates, the co-pays, et cetera, et cetera, it all changes. And it's difficult for people to understand that it can change that much in a year. And if any of you have a Lexer, E-L-I-X-I-R, that one's gone. So I know some people don't read their paper mail anymore, but if you had that plan, you would definitely need to enroll in another one because I think they might have transitioned you to a different one. But you want you want to uh, be aware of that. So let's say you you say, oh, I don't take any medication, so I don't need one of these prescription plans. Well. If you don't get one, you're going to get an ongoing permanent penalty from Medicare that's assessed to you and is held there. And then if and when you get a prescription plan in the future, then that penalty is going to be tacked on to the actual cost of the prescription plan. So what my clients do is they'll get the least expensive one if they have no medications. And believe it or not, there is actually a prescription plan this year that only costs 40 cents a month. So to avoid the penalty, you could pay $5 this year and you wouldn't get the penalty. So not, I, someone said this earlier too, but I'll repeat it, not all medications are, are covered by the Medicare RX plans. Also, this is, I think, really significant. Some of the medications are actually less expensive through Amazon, Costco, or you might get a discount by good RX. I my clients tell me all all this stuff and then we go on there and we like if we see a medication that's a thousand dollars okay we're trying to help these people so you know it's real easy to look on amazon and 
So all I can surmise from these prescription plans is that the government gets one deal with the pharmaceutical companies, but Amazon and Costco and these other ones are getting different deals with pharmaceuticals. So you, you really have to uh, be proactive a little and you can save on your prescription plan, but it's a little more to it. It just keeps evolving. And then this year we also learned that if you use one pharmacy versus another one, there could be a substantial difference in copays. So um, you need you need a Part D if you're getting a supplement and you don't want to get the penalty. And then the next step is which prescription plan you're going to get, and then these other issues would be addressed. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And we're starting to get some great questions that are rolling in from our from our group here. Um, so I'm going to put this out to both of you guys and, and you can you answer this if you want to. Uh, you guys can pick who, who you want. But um, so someone is asking for clarification on the three month prior. So when I said uh, you've got your birthday month and then three months prior to your birthday month, does that mean that coverage actually begins three months prior or does it just mean you can apply for it? three months prior to your birthday month. I'll, t I'll take that, Brad. Right. It's, it, it's exactly what you said. It means that you can apply as early as three months prior to your birthday month, but the effective date of your plan would be typically the first of the following month uh, after your birthday. The only exception is if your birth date is on the first of the month, then mm -hmm. you would be effective the first of the previous month. So, yep. So let's say, uh, I'll just pick on October 15th. That's my daughter Catherine's birthday. So if your birthday was on October 15th, does that mean that Catherine would have, she, she could apply three months prior to her 65th birthday, but then her first, the first day of coverage would be November 1st? That's exactly correct. Okay. And your daughter's birthday is the same birthday as my son. Ah, <laughs> small world. That's great. Um, Okay, here's another question. Um, someone asked, can I change to Part G? This is Chris. Can I change to Part G under Medigap if I originally have signed up for a Medicare Advantage plan? I can answer that. Okay. So if you want Plan G and you're on an Advantage plan, like right now there's one carrier. I, I won't tell you the name because I don't want to plug one of them because I represent a number of them. But there's one one company that is allowing if you have an advantage plan or you have no advantage plan and no supplement or whatever, you can get in until for a January 1st effective date and you can pick a plan G supplement. Otherwise, um, you would have to answer medical questions. Yeah, and Virginia, if I may add to that, um, that, is, that is pretty much the way it goes. There are some carriers that have what's called a trial right period. And the only exception to what Virginia mentioned is when you're within that first 12 months of yeah. either your Medicare Advantage or your Medicare Supplement coverage timeframe, you have the right to switch to the other. Um, but it typically, you know, it has to be within that 12 month period so you can still get in without going through underwriting. Okay. Okay. Um, here, here's one uh, for either of you. Someone has been told by the Social Security office that they qualify for Medicare. Uh, starting in July of 2024 because of a disability. Um, when can they sign up for that plan? They just want to make sure that there's no gap in, in coverage. So are you saying they're going to get Medicare disability in July of 2024? That's that's what it looks like, yeah. So they can get their, their, medic, um, their Medicare supplement if that's what they you know, if they want to get a supplement, they can get their Medicare and then get a supplement, just like the people over 65, 65 and over, they can get a, a supplement. The 
the rates can be pricey on the supplements for the under 65 people though, but they would get it in, you know, at the same time that they're getting their Medicare. Yeah, and, and I, ex exactly. And they just have to make sure that they have been on disability for 24 months because as of the 25th month, maybe that's the situation with this client that they're actually um, eligible. They will be eligible for Medicare July of 2024. Uh, then, you know, they can enroll the three months prior for a July 1st effective date. Hey, here's then, a good Oh, oh go, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, I was just going to say, I know that there's seven qualifying life-changing events that uh, you can challenge Irma. Um, if someone's income is changing year by year, like how do they go about is how many times can you challenge it or what's the best way to do that? Well, if, if they want to challenge the, the, uh, the Irma amount, is that correct, Matt? That's the yeah. Point. Yeah. Um, that, but it seems like the, uh, income varies from year to year. Is that, is there, um, an amount of times you can challenge the, the Irma surcharge? I don't think there is like there there's a list of things uh, that you can and items I, that they give you and you can challenge it on if it fits into these parameters. There's a whole list of them. I can't find anything that says there's any limitation on them, but they're they do look back two years right. for, for that. And then um, Besides looking back for the two years, there's this other thing that clients have told me about, and I've actually seen the form, like you can fill this form out and, you know, if you have a hardship of some kind, you can maybe uh, get, a, you know, change what they've assessed for you as your IRMA charge. And it's pretty, it's funny. This came up just yesterday in one of my reviews and I told them, I said, oh, I love being able to, it's it's pretty rare when this happens. So I, I said, I won't give their names away, but I was just so happy. They they went in and challenged, they went to the, uh, they went into the office and they, and they had to show. So on that two year look back, like Virginia was talking about, they showed that yes, that was a big year, but it was because I was retiring and I had some stock options, you know, I had some income that was coming in because it was my last year. And they were they were successful in their challenge and proving that that was a one time anomaly and therefore um, on a go forward basis they're in a much lower tax bracket much less income so it's one of the few times I've heard that someone was actually successful in the challenge I was just really happy for them so it can happen it's pretty rare but it but it can happen. Yeah, Man. just just so everyone knows, the the seven their uh, death of a spouse, uh, marriage, divorce, or annulment. Uh, you or your spouse stops uh, working the number of hours that you're doing, um, an involuntary loss of income, uh, loss of a pension, and then a receipt of a sell settlement payment. So those are the seven that I've seen most often that you have a good chance. But again, uh, the answer is always no if you don't ask. Yeah, it's just to be clear, this IRMA that we're talking about, I-R-M-A-A, -A, Medicare Income Related Monthly Adjustment Amount. That's a mouthful. Just look at Ir IRMA's not your friend, okay? Just look at it that way. It's essentially just added cost or a tax, or added surcharge, really, uh, of Medicare. So our goal as planners is to try and keep income below the thresholds to try and keep your Medicare uh, less expensive. Um, here's another one that came in. Uh, I'm a retired government worker and carried my health benefits into retirement. Do I need to participate in Medicare? Uh, so I'll just, um, I'll take that one. So if, um, if you are, are you a military retiree? Um, I just wanted to address that. Not, so not military, uh, if you worked at the flight, uh, kind of. Like a gov sure government agency, yes. Mm -hmm. So if you, so this is an excellent question for your employer. So um, it it depends on whether they're going to continue that coverage. Um, and you are the, the question was they were retired. They're, yes. They're no longer active, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. 
So um, it really is a question for the employer because if they're going to be stopping benefits, then, then yes, then you would want to apply for Medicare Part B if you haven't already done so. Um, that would be very important. So just want to find out how long your coverage will remain. And, you know, as long as they cover you, you don't have to apply for Medicare Part B. But once you know if there is that point where they won't cover you, then you will need to do that at your earliest convenience. Okay. Um, here's a, here's a, so someone is uh, asking you guys to speak to what uh, was reported as a disturbing trend, major studies, and the news for advantage insurance companies to deny necessary procedures and tests requested by a doctor. I've had an advantage plan for many years and was happy, but now thinking maybe in elder years, we need to be in original Medicare uh, with Medigap to be assured of quality care. What are your thoughts on both these points to help us decide original or advantage? No, well, I'll take that. You know, with with the advantage plans, um, you know, you can look on the internet, you can Google it, and you could see can see that there are a lot of lawsuits against advantage plans for um, the two main issues are denying like a referral and the other the the one that I've got calls on through the years has been in regards to facilities now this may not be um, every advantage plan but it it would probably depend on the one you have but those those are the two main issues that I've seen over the last years that I've been working in this area. So you, you would want to take a strong look at your particular Advantage plan, see, see if they're being sued. And, you know, there's, there's a couple of these that really have a lot of lawsuits going on against them. So uh, you want to examine yours carefully. The other thing is what Diane uh, explained well, she talked about Scripps. So like the scan plans over at Scripps, the way I understand it, their advantage plans are, are not going to be there anymore after January 1, they're gone. And then uh, Scripps is not taking, you know, other advantage plans. And so Diane told you, like, if you have an advantage PPO, you know, that you could still, it just, and then if you have one of those, you got to make sure your Scripps doctors are going to be in network and not out of network. You always got to watch out of network because you got to find out exactly what you're going to pay out of network. So, those, those are some of the potential problems that someone could have with Advantage plans. And again, I, I can't make a blanket statement about all Advantage plans, but those are some of the, the current issues. Now, you don't have any of this these issues with the Medigap and the supplement policies. So, you know, if you don't want to deal with anything along those lines that I just described and you want to have flexibility and at the most only have to pay an annual deductible, which we didn't talk about, which uh, on the G plans starting in January, it's $240 for the whole year, no co-pays, no percentages. So, you know, to the gentleman or, or woman that asked the question, I would say at a minimum, you should look at the uh, Medigap policies and compare it with your Advantage plan. Okay. We've got time for just a couple more. So if there's anything else you guys want to, us to ask, send it in now, but we're going to be wrapping up here. Um, this is a good one. Uh, what does the panel think of the AARP supplemental plan? <laughs> well, I should probably take that one. 
Uh, yes, so uh, I am with United Healthcare and the AARP Medicare Advantage or Medicare Supplement Plans. That is, are the ones that um, you know agents and, and brokers are able to sell. Uh, so I can tell you that we offer eight different plans in San Diego County, basically the state. And um, I think you know one of the unique things about United is that we offer the full product portfolio. So we do offer Medicare Advantage plans, Medicare supplement plans, and standalone Part D prescription drug plans. Um, but I think what makes AARP Medicare supplement plans unique, um, if you look across all the carriers, is um, we are number one in market share in terms of enrollment, about 5 million people on those plans. And we have a very stable rate history. So I think that's the key because everybody, you know, who's on a fixed income wants predictability in terms of their healthcare costs, uh, or at least to be able to budget. So with AARP Medicare supplement plans, you won't see an echocardiogram like graph when it comes to the rates because they don't exceed more than 5% a year. So they're very, very stable. So I think that's one of the big things. Um, there are other things as well, other advantages in terms of coverage and value added benefits like discounts for hearing, vision, and, and even a gym membership thrown in. So yeah, so, so there's a lot to consider, um, but the rates are very, very competitive. And I think you just should explore all options. And okay. One more, Brad, if we, if we can. Uh, yeah, I think we got time for one more. Okay, a few a few times I've seen, um, I've heard that it's hard to go from advantage to original. Um, is, is that really the case? But not going the other way, it is easier process. So yes, oh, go ahead, Diane. Sorry. Oh, thanks, Virginia. So um, so from from Medicare Advantage to Medicare Supplement, um, it it can be if the individual has any sort of health condition that would um, preclude them from joining if they had to go through underwriting. So this is where guaranteed issue scenarios are really come in play. Um, and there are guaranteed issue scenarios available for, and I mentioned this again, for Scripps Clinic and Scripps Coastal patients who, you know, maybe want to get into a Medicare supplement plan because they've been on a Medicare Advantage plan. Well, you, you can do that and guaranteed issue will apply. So, um, so just know that, but generally it's easier to go from Medicare supplement to Medicare Advantage because there are no pre-existing conditions or any health underwriting involved. Perfect, thank and you. Brad, and Matt, if I could just say one more thing, I just wanna offer some clarification about the annual enrollment period and then the Medicare Advantage open enrollment period. Um, just so everybody knows, the annual enrollment period that's happening right now that goes between October 15th and December 7th is really the time for everyone on, on a Medicare plan to make a, a, either a decision to either add a plan, drop a plan, switch a plan. This is the time. The open, and this is what's tricky with the nomenclature that the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid uses, the Medicare Advantage open enrollment period, January through March, is specifically for Medicare Advantage members. Mm -hmm. So those who are on a Medicare Advantage plan who want to make one more change before they have to be in their plan for the rest of the year. So just know that it's kind of like a, a second opportunity to make a switch if the change you made during the annual enrollment period doesn't suit your needs. So, so just wanted to make sure everybody knows that they really have two, two times when they can make that, make an election, but, but try to do it during the annual enrollment period if you can. Okay. And then uh, Diane and Virginia, um, are you okay if, if people have questions for you, if they were, if our, if our group, our clients were to get in touch with Matt or I, are you comfortable if we pass along your information to people we work with? Yes. Yes. Okay. And what's the preferred, do you prefer that they email you, call you? What's the best way to get in touch with you? It's fine. Either yep. way. Either. Okay. Okay. So we'll send out, uh, we'll send out your contact information by email to the group. 
um, so they have it and then they can go direct with you. Okay. okay. Um, well, ladies, thank you so much for participating here. This was so informative. Uh, Matt, thanks for being involved here. And uh, we just hope that uh, everybody found this to be educational and informative. And, you know, it's challenging because we're not taught this stuff in school and, you know, Matt and I journey with people and they really have to figure out what's best for them. And it is so unique and so personal. And uh, that's why I think events like this are really important. And um, and as you guys uh, both pointed out today, it's also important to revisit this every single year just to stay abreast of the trends and the costs and the changes.